So welcome. I've got uh, a guy that I've worked with for many years, uh, four years actually, who has rephrased and um, got a different perspective on the phrase journeyman. And uh, he's made it to several clubs um, from one of the biggest clubs in football to clubs in different as far reaching places as New Zealand and collected many miles along the way with some great experiences. And um, yeah, so I want to welcome uh, Killian Sheridan to this call. Um, we work like this a lot, don't we, Killian? Um, so this is nothing new to us because when you're in New Zealand, um, when you're in New Zealand, we have to do this. Um, so this isn't new to us, but you know, appreciate, appreciate you being on. Um, interestingly, um, when you were in New Zealand, which we'll get to later, because I think there's a, there's a great story in that, but um, just recently, uh, a young man that you um, met or played with in New Zealand, Sapri. Yeah, played, played. Played with, um, you know, has now joined the Train Brain stable, um, you know, so um, great guy and a talented guy apparently as well, right? Yeah, very, very. Um, yeah. yeah, I think we'll, we'll do well. Yeah, and, um, and I think a theme that we'll get to in this call, um, you know, which is one of coincidence, um, you know, um, maybe his journey wouldn't have happened had it not for me in you. No, 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 I don't believe that. I don't believe that. But before we get into that, we will rewind and we'll get to, um, you know, your bit. I think it's a lot more common now for players to have more clubs. Um, I think in, fo in football, generally, a lot of contracts are smaller in terms of length. Everyone, everyone now is signing like maximum like two years the majority take take away the premier league i think a lot of a lot of players signing one year two year deals um, and i think clubs clubs also are signing or are filling their squads to the maximum of their budget so if one player isn't playing they need to move them or they can't afford for one player not to be working out um, and I've always been, if, if I'm at a club and I'm not playing and they don't want me, then I'll, I'll go and find another club. So I've kind of, I've looked at it in a good way probably the last year where I've thought of it as having all the clubs means clubs and coaches, managers, scouts, directors still want me. Mm. I'd be worried if I'd come off left the contracts or was free and I wasn't getting any offers. Yeah. It, it's a, it's an interesting one that because, you know, you said outside of the premiership and there's probably a misconception that you, you know, you should be having three, four year deals um, when the reality is outside of the glamour of the premiership. There is yeah. a there is an economy of football that um, a certain yeah. level of player has to address, right? Yeah, I think I think when a lot of the time when people are talking about football, they have to separate they have to separate the Premiership, the Premier League, to the majority of other footballers. Right. I think it's it's you can't compare a lot of a lot of situations with that. Um, like even now, some of them are having to take pay cuts in the Premier League. Yeah, it's it's not really gonna hurt them too much. Like it's, but there'll be players maybe in League One, League Two that are gonna have to take cuts where, like a ten twenty percent cut could mean one of their bills isn't gonna get paid. Um, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I think it's a it's a big misconception of everyone sees the Premier League and think that's it. that's footballer that's every footballer 
Um, so in terms of for yourself, because obviously, um, you know, you were, um, you know, you started, um, football wasn't your thing initially, was it? Uh, no, Gaelic football. Gaelic football was my sport. The first, Gaelic football was the first sport I would have um, been taught, like fundamentals of, of the sports. I would have grown up with Gaelic football. Mm. Um, what was that club that you... Was, 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 was Wisclop your first football club? Uh, in, in which? In Gaelic football or in... In football. Football. My first club would have been... Uh, Belvedere in Dublin. Okay, Belvedere. Yep. Then, like before that, it would have just been my town, Baileyborough, Baileyborough Celtic. And um, but, like, yeah, it was kind of more for fun. Like we'd go and play. Um, so you weren't playing football with, like, you know, like a lot of young people, and they're like, okay, I want to be a footballer. You were a Gaelic footballer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the yeah, the only time we would have played football is. After school, go to my friend's house or my house or somewhere, and we'd just be out in the garden. And that was the level of my football training. Um, and then, obviously, kind of when I moved to up to Belvedere in Dublin, uh, that's when it I started to take more seriously. I kind of had the. I think it was only maybe in my last year where I stopped playing Gaelic football, and I was like, okay, I need to focus on. Or not, not even not focus on it, but I didn't want to do too much with my body. So because there was times when I'd play, I'd play a soccer match on a Saturday morning up in Dublin, and then I'd drive back and play a Gaelic match Saturday afternoon. And then there was times where I just like I'd feel my legs, everything just start cramping up in the game. I was like, I can't. Were you any and, good at Gaelic football? Gaelic football. Uh, yeah, Gaelic football. I'd um, I'd be more confident to say, like, yeah, I was a good Gaelic football player than right. Than I'm, a good, than I'm a good, good soccer player. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, why why the switch? Um. Uh, interesting question. Uh, Probably the main because Gaelic football is an amateur sport, mm -hmm. so you're not there's no you're not making a career from being a Gaelic footballer. Okay, um, that's and, more out of love. Yeah, yeah, and then football is. I don't know if football was ever like a dream for me because it never really entered my head that it it would have like it could happen. So I don't think I ever thought of. Oh, I'd love to be a footballer or I'm, I want to be a footballer or anything like this because I don't think because I didn't want to, I just don't think I ever thought that it actually could happen. Mm -hmm. and, and then gradually like one thing started to happen and then it would go on to the next stage. And then I started to think, oh, actually this, there's a chance this could happen. Um, when did you, when did you realize I mean, what was the chance that this could happen? You know, there's a there's a time, you know, for for a lot of young players, they get scouted, um, they get scouted. Somebody tells them they're good enough to play at a certain level. You know, what was what was that for you? Come on, you're running around uh, football, you're having a blast. You know, you're having a crack over there. Uh, so I went to a I went to a soccer camp, a summer soccer camp, mm -hmm. one summer, and one of the the guy who ran the kind of the area for that for the FAI it was an FAI soccer camp and he ran that area for soccer so he'd come and like put on these camps and go around and he saw me and just was like you have something <laughs> and took a like took a liking to me Sean McCaffrey he died he died about a year two years ago um but he yeah he saw he saw something in me when I was, what age would that have been? That must have been 13, maybe. Right. Um, Which is quite late for... 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I th- I, 13, 14, yeah, probably 12 or 13, I'd say. Um, and he was like, what are you doing? Like, where, what do you, do you want to, you should go for the, ah, does he was like, you should go for these Ireland trials for the under 15 team. So it would have been, yes, yeah, so I must have been, I must have been even older, I must have been 14. 14. He was, exactly. he was like, he was like, you should go for the trials for this Ireland team. Um, so I went up, I went up to that and I arrived up and they were like, what position do you play? And for my team that we were playing, so like the team I was playing for in soccer, it was the team, like we, we didn't train. We just showed up at games on a, whatever, I don't know, a Saturday. And so I just turned up and they were like, what position do you play? And normally I'd, I would have played midfield. Mm. Like in my team, it was basically if you're the best player, you have to be in the middle of it all. Yeah. Or you think you're a good goal scorer, so you're saying striker. Yeah. Uh, and then you went in, in goal. So, you, you know. So I went up and I was thinking, oh no, uh, left back. So I played as a, I played as a left back and didn't get didn't get picked, and then the guy what Sean. Back? <laughs> yeah, I went, I went up and they were like, "Where you'd are you playing?" Like, uh, Believe me, you'd have been the tallest left back anyone would have ever seen. Yeah, no, actually, to be, um, I wasn't as I wasn't the tallest. Um, when I was for the, through those years, not tall that I am now, like where I'll stick out that I'm mm-hmm. tall. I kind of spurt. Um. So yeah, so didn't get that, and then Sean phoned me afterwards, and he was like, eh, "Yeah, if you want to like get into the break into that into the Irish team, you're gonna have to move up to Dublin because they won't really, you're not gonna make it playing for Baileyborough." So he he told the team in Dublin, Belvedere, and he was like, "I've got this, got this guy in, from Cavan. I see something in." So I went up there and was playing with them for played with them for three years before I moved over. So, so, so what? So at this point, you're 14. Yeah. So how far did you live from Dublin? Uh, about an hour and a half. And you uh, played for this team in in Dublin. Yeah. So my first my my first year. My first year, we had training on a Wednesday evening. And we played on Saturday morning, and that was it. So Wednesday evening, my my mum would drive drive me up to training. Yeah, drive me up to training on the Wednesday evening, and then drive up again on Saturday morning. Um, or sometimes I'd get a bus um, on the Saturday morning and then come back. And then the next two years after that. It was, we trained on a Saturday morning and played our games on a Sunday morning. So I was traveling up. And staying overnight. No, mo- most of the times I'd get the bus up Saturday morning and come back after training. And then Sunday morning, my mum would drive up for the game, drive me up for the games. Um, so it was, yeah, it was pretty much my full weekend every Every weekend. Um, yeah. So and so, really, that was the start. Start then. Did you start thinking and believing that football or soccer, as you say, was going to be it? Or at this point, are you just at this point? Are you just still? I'm just playing. I'm just playing a bit. Kind of, yeah. And I still. I felt like I was just doing it because it was the right thing to do. If I wanted, to, if I wanted something to happen, this is the way to, this is the pathway mm-hmm. for it to happen. But in the, it wasn't until my last year there when I started to get trials and stuff. So, um, my, my Belvedere team, a lot of teams back then, the like main Dublin teams would take players from all over the country. So our team had about 
maybe like in the st- in the first eleven, there would have been maybe one guy who was actually from Dublin, and everyone else was traveling from all over the country. Okay, so that's like a it's like a big a big club down there that you know. That, yeah. So this so the league that we would have played in is where all the scouts will come over and watch. Okay. So, so for the games, the sideline is just full of guys in the club jackets watching okay. watching games. Out, out of interest, what you know when when the scouts are watching back then, what happens to your game as a young player? Does it go up? Does it go down? Do you feel like you know there's an expectation? You know, just you know, I think that helps. You know, what 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 are you thinking? Um. See, the thing was, with, in my team, I wasn't the best player at all. So the, I, I never had the expectation or I never had the feeling that all these scouts are coming to watch me or everyone's talking about me. Everyone, they were all looking at other guys. Um, so like in my first two years, it was just guys nearly every other weekend going over for trials. And I was never, I never had anything, no interest, nothing. So I was like... Going over to, so when you say going over for the purpose of people, they're going over to where? To every, nearly every every team in England. Right. Um, and because like from, playing from my, with you at that point, that's, you know, playing now that, you know, is relatively famous. Who's who's around at that point? Um. From that, from that team that I was in, from that team that I was in, I think from, I think more than the first 11, I think there was maybe 12 guys who went, who ended up moving over right. to, to teams. Um, one of the guys, one of the guys was at Selk, there was Man City, Sunderland, um, but from that team, I think I'm sure there's only one guy still playing. In he's playing in Northern Ireland, Gary right. Breen. Um, so nobody like, like um, um, uh, nobody like um, Stephen Ireland or is Stephen Ireland. No, no, he'd be he'd be older than me. He's older. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, from my from my age in in like Ireland, the whole Ireland setup, there was um there's a guy, Graham Carey. He's he's actually over in Bulgaria. This that's Sophia team. Um he's I think he could be one of the only ones who's who still went on and had a, a career. Had a career, yeah. Okay. Um, so so, so no kind of standout name because it's interesting. Then what you're saying is from from that Dublin team, people then go to England and they're, and and they're you know they're in lots of English clubs now. So if we go back, um, 2005, 2006, okay, you get an opportunity. Where where's that? Where does that take you? So, so it's actually funny. So my opportunity only comes about again from Sean McCaffrey, the guy who saw me at the soccer camp. Right. So he got he got the the Ireland under seventeen and under nineteen job. So while I was still playing in Dublin, so in my maybe my last year, yes, yeah, so when I was probably I would have been sixteen now. Um, 15, 16 he was calling me into the Irish under 17 teams and I, this is at the time when all the, guy, all the good players would have moved over to England when they were 16 right? and I was still playing in Dublin so at these tournaments scouts from clubs will see Killian Sheridan Belvedere so I would have been maybe one of two players that didn't have a team and mm-hmm. um, and then from that I, I got the started getting trials um, so would you say that's quite late that was quite uh, late. 
Yeah, I, I would have started getting them because at that time everyone moved over when they were 16 because I think legally they couldn't, clubs couldn't bring them over until they were that age. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just never had, I never had any trials until literally, until I was 16. Right. Um, so, then, so, okay, so the journey, the journey is well on, it's, it's on its way now. Okay. Um, and you found yourself at not just a club, but one of the biggest clubs in football. Tell us yeah, about yeah. how that came yeah. about. Um, it was funny actually for the trial because, um, so before, before I went to Celtic, I'd been at, who was I at? Norwich. Norwich, Blackburn, and Sunderland, I think, were the three. Um, and then the Celtic one was coming up. I can't remember right same what time. Trip. You've gone on the same trip, or you've come, you've gone back home and then gone to Celtic. Yeah, no, so I would have went over like maybe before, whenever there would be a break in school normally, mm -hmm. and you you'll go over for a week, come back, and then further down the line, if there's another break, you go over, come back. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've done that, what three? Yeah, three times, um, and none of them, none of them wanted to to take me. And then going over for the Celtic one. So I remember my flight was at like I don't know seven or eight in the morning, and I was getting a taxi. I stayed with a friend in Dublin and got a taxi at like five or six in the morning, and the taxi driver probably was looking at me thinking what's this guy like getting a flight on? Because I would have been 16 maybe. And anyway, I started chatting to him and he was asked what I was doing. I said, going over for a football trial with Celtic. And he was like, Celtic, no way. Um, just whatever. He said something along the lines of whatever you do, just give it everything. If you just run as much as you can, do as much as you can, just give it, give everything you can. And that's stuck in my head going over. So when I was um, playing one of the, there was a trial game set up and I was just running. I just ran everywhere. Um, and like at that, at that time, I didn't really have like tactical awareness or positioning as much as some of the other guys would have. <laughs> so I'd be running, I'd be running into guys space like the other stood, played with two strikers he was like oh, out there you're in the wrong yeah. place yeah it wasn't until you were just running you were just running yeah yeah I like I scored I think I scored two goals or something played good but I had that taxi driver in my head so whenever like I was just all the time making an option any defender had it I'd make a run I'd make this run, that run, just always working, just working like for the full 90 minutes. And then after, so once I'd signed uh, a few months later, the, the guy who was playing up front of me in that game, he, was, he said to me, he was like, when you came over for that trial game, you were so annoying because he was playing up front and he was like, you just kept running into all, all my positions. I couldn't do anything. And I was like, yeah, well, I was you trying to get blame the taxi driver for that. Yeah. yeah. It, it's funny because, um, you know, m many years ago in, in uh, Edinburgh, I met a taxi driver as well who um, asked me, and I was about to go and do a conference. And it Sorry, Jamie, I'm just going to blow my nose because it's... <laughs> So it's interesting that, you know, with um, the taxi driver, because um, I have a Scottish taxi driver who was responsible for um, something when in Edinburgh when I landed to do a conference. And it was probably one of the worst trips that I'd had to get to Edinburgh via Austria. And, and um, you know, he, he was amazing because, um, you know, I'm very, it's rare that I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my God, what a day. But this was one of those rare moments. And he was like, um, 
you know, where are you going? Why are you in Edinburgh? And I'm like, I just don't want to speak to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And and he changed my state and um and be, between the hotel and everything going wrong to the venue, I've got out of the taxi and he said, if ever you need, if ever you're in Edinburgh, give me a call. And I said to him, you have just changed my whole talk this morning. It was to Red Bull, um, you know, like 200 people. And it was... Just just from saying that? No, no I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big, big bit more backstory to it. it, it, it the, 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 the stance of it was, you know... Um, you know, what are you doing in Edinburgh? And I was like, I don't want to speak to anyone. It was like I had a hand yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. go over. You know, I just didn't I just didn't want to speak to anyone. And he said, um, and he said to me, he said, um, he, and he said, Great city this. I love this city. And and you know me, you know, that's great for me. i I'd, I'd be engaged with with him, you know, and and he, he he said, What are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm working and uh he said, what do you do? And, I'm, and, and you know me, as soon as I say, oh, I work with athletes, you know, everybody, yeah. want, they want to know. Yeah. Um, so I said, you know, I train brains. And, and he said, anybody famous? And at the time, I'd literally just come off the summer of working with Flintoff in the Ashes. Okay, yeah. And he was like, no way. He said, I love cricket. And you got to remember, I'm in Scotland. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this guy is having a laugh, yeah? yeah? And it's it's about eight o'clock in the morning and I'm going, I'm thinking you're having a laugh and Scotland and he's, and I said, I said, oh, you like cricket? And, and he said, oh, I love cricket. He said, you know, we've got good cricket up here. And funnily enough, Scotland had just beaten, I think it was either Scotland had just beaten somebody or they'd beaten Ireland or they'd beaten some big nation in, in cricket that summer. Yeah. And, you know, so I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe he's right. And he goes, he goes, then he goes, how did you get into that? And, you know, and, and honestly, it's like probably the one time in my life I'm just thinking, I just don't want to speak to anybody, you know, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I'm like, oh, through basketball. And he was like, basketball? Who? You know, I, I, he said, I love basketball. Um, and he, and uh, I said, oh, I said, a mentor of mine, Alton Bird. I know Alton Bird. And because we were in Edinburgh, well, Alton used to play in Edinburgh, so... Ah, oh, okay, yeah. It, 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 that wasn't, you know, it, that wasn't not a possibility that, yeah. you know... He, he checked could, out. Yeah, so he went, Alton Bird, and then he, start, and then he started naming a load of Scottish players who I was aware of. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this guy, you know, he, he, he does know his basketball. So we're, we're on this journey, and... Um, he said, "Oh, that's amazing!" And um, so, so now, obviously, I'm I'm a, I'm a bit more engaged. So we're going out of Edinburgh, um, sunny morning, and he goes, um, he goes, so, and I'm kind of warmed up. And he goes, "Look over," he said, he said, "Look over there," and I'm like, "Where, where?" And I look up, and it's the the fourth road bridge. But we're going, we're almost going down online with it yeah so it's like yeah. the, the perspective is like i'm looking up and i look up and i and i swear i went wow i went like that and he's obviously done that loads of times with people yeah yeah i'm going wow so all of a sudden i've come from this i've had a nightmare journey to edinburgh my room's all messed up. Somebody's built something to my room. Um, and this, I don't want to speak to anyone. And this guy in the cab has, has just changed my mood yeah. completely. And we pull up at this stately home where the conference was. And that's why I said to him, I said, I said, you've just changed my whole talk this morning. And he said, if ever you need, if ever you're in Edinburgh, 
I want you to give me a call. I'll take you anywhere. Yeah. Story continues. I walk in. I give the I, one of the best talks I've ever, 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 ever done. All right, ever done. Um, you know, Neil from Red Bull. I finished the talk. Neil from Red Bull. He says, um, you know, he works at Reebok now, big global head of Reebok. And he he come. I come off the stage, and he said, he said, right now. He said, you, he said, you'd have your choice of anybody in here right now. He said, in fact, I'd sleep with you right now. And it, I mean, that's how good it, good it was. And it was all because this guy, and he's called Nick Smith, all right? Yeah. Nick Smith. He, like, as a taxi driver, and you know what it's like. I mean, that's why I love your story about the taxi driver. Like, he actually, you know, that kind of advice and that interjection in somebody's life, you know, shifted, um, you know, my perspective on what, what that was that morning. So, you know, I love that. And, and today, you know, I'm still, I'm still really good friends with him. Like, you know, 14, 14 years on, we're yeah. still we're still really good friends. And every time I go to Edinburgh, um, I always, you know, I always call him. So, um, you know, so thank, you know, thanks for that. But so that, that was 06. Okay, so tell me what happened after the taxi driver and after you got my taxi driver story. But I love that because, do you know why I love that? I think a lot of young players and a lot of people just in general, um, Killian, need to understand that it's they, they're looking for the obvious too much and i think sometimes yeah, yeah. the performance or the situation or the opportunity doesn't always come from the obvious situation yeah yeah like it comes from someone that has nothing to do with football yeah someone like that's not a it's not a football coach a manager a parent or a scout or an agent just yeah. a taxi driver, it's just a taxi driver saying like, just give it everything. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So go on. So let, let's, uh, we're going to change gear. We got, you know, so we're, we're, we're at Celtic, big club. Come on. Um, um, this doesn't happen to everybody. Yeah. Uh, How the, are you, what are you thinking? The last, the last month or so I've done a few interviews and some podcasts and they were asking me about uh, the same thing like going Celtic such a big club um, and I think what helped me adapt quickly was that I didn't have the same I didn't have the same upbringing as a lot of players over there like a lot of players who come through academies from when they're young have the pre not probably the pressure and expectation that... It is pressure. It is pressure. Yeah. That they've put... This is everything they've worked for. They're building everything towards mm -hmm. making it as a pro. And I never had that. I kind of was just... Until, until I started to go to Dublin for, what, two years, two, three years, where it's two days out of my week. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there was the... Driving up and down the traveling was a sacrifice, but other than that, it was kind of like, okay, I'll do it and see what happens. We 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 could we could skip forward though, and and I'm gonna say this right now, so it'll kind of move us forward to today and then back. How much do you think that's had an impact on the rest of your career? So do you, uh, do you think if you'd have had that pressure? Um, you'd have had a different career in terms of um i think i think it, it it's has it contributed has i it think there's pros and cons to it i think it i think it definitely helped me first of all in giving me a career so like getting me into the position of breaking into a first team at celtic which does you does wonders for the rest of your career because it gives you that clubs will look at you 
if you have appearances for Celtic, clubs will take you just on the basis of that. If you have a bad year or two, you've still got the Celtic on your CV. Mm -hmm. um, so like for me to break in without, without the pressure and all that, it helped. I, did, I could just go and kind of play free and I was naive to everything going on. But then maybe once I got in and became a professional or like I started my career, then it, it, maybe if I had a if I had a different mentality back then or was thinking differently, I could have been thinking, right, I want to go, I want to go to the top now, or I want to be go to the next level instead of kind of everything that was happening was like almost like a bonus, like wow, this is like. I can't believe I've done this and then just kind of going with it instead of maybe trying trying to build on it. What would you what would you have needed at that time? Uh, when you just when I broke it you needed a different mentality. Uh, probably maybe belief Belief, maybe, yeah, probably belief in that I could, I can go and be a Celtic player. Like instead, of, instead of being having a few appearances, be a regular, be a first team player. Don't be like instead of being a a youth team player or a reserve player, mm. coming up and getting games being an actual like first team regular player in the first team squad um, when I, I probably did never really felt never felt like that at the time I was kind of like not good enough to, to make it here or, or did you have those thoughts walking around the training ground and looking around uh, we, <laughs> I was talking to one of the interviews I done last week was with one of my friends, um, who was in. The, he was a year year two older than me, but we were in the reserves together. At Celtic. Yeah, yeah. Um, Simon Ferry, he does a open goal podcast up in Scotland, doing really well. And uh, but we, I was saying to him like we used to hate training. Like if we got called in to train for the first team, it's just, you're just like filled with dread because you you go in being afraid to make mistakes. I was anyway. You just want to get go get through training without making a mistake. Um, instead of instead of going into training thinking, right, this is how can I impress today? How can I how can I catch the eye? How can I get in? Um, and yeah it was, it was just the wrong like I don't know I think we just had a real negative dressing room it was like oh no or there might be three or four of us called up to train and we'd all, we'd all be like oh no here we go right. like you're, you're getting you're getting called into train with Celtic first team and you're, that's your reaction it's... And, and, and that's interesting because you know, there are, you know, there are guys today. What would you what would you say to the youngster today that is getting called up to um, first team training, where wherever it is at Celtic, at Blackburn, at United, at Norwich, at wherever? You know, what would you say? Um, yeah, probably go in thinking like, how can you think thinking of the good things you can do rather than thinking how can I not do something bad even like even now sometimes it'll be in my head like warming up as a sub going into a game I'll be thinking or if it's a hard game or if we're losing or it's a draw instead of thinking sometimes instead of thinking I can go on and score the winner you're yeah. thinking oh, this is this is a hard game to come into yeah. and, and I appreciate the honesty because that shows that you're human and you you know, and, and it shows a vulnerability of, not a weakness, but a vulnerability of that, you know, you are human and um, 
And that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just being equipped. What we always talk about is having the tools, isn't it? To, yeah, be able yeah. to, to deal with that. Um, but you were at Celtic for four years. So within that, you know, being called up to the first team and, um, you know, what, you know, what were the, some of the key moments in that Celtic career that you, you experienced? Uh, you got past it. Yeah, no, like, if, it was more so if something, if you had a bad training or you done something bad, it would stay with you for longer than, than when you do something good. And then that would, that could like kill, that could kill your whole training. If I, if I'd done something bad, I'd be like, oh no, like, they think I'm terrible. Like, oh, you can feel all the first team players, like the senior players, um, like thinking, fucking, what's he doing here? Kind of way. Um, but I should say also that I did, I did have some good trainings. Like, I, <laughs> it wasn't all like that. Um, but yeah, like when you, the feeling like when you're doing good or you have a good training or score a goal in training, you feel like you feel like the best player ever. I was like being able to, like being able to bottle that is probably the, the hardest thing to do in football. Um, we, we'll we'll come back to that because that's been part of some of the work that we've done. What? When did you make your debut then for the first team? Uh, Two thousand and seven. So I signed. Yeah, I signed two thousand and six, and was over that summer. Uh, and then with the youth team, just hit the ground running, just scoring a lot, and got called up to the reserves. My first reserve game, I scored. I think I scored two goals. And then I think, like at Celtic, kind of everyone was talking, "Who's this raw, tall guy?" Kind of thing. And I speak then, of tall guy. I think. Well, that, that was the one word that all the managers, everyone would say, yeah, he's, he's very raw. Um, and Gordon Strachan was the manager. Uh, and he he saw something in me, he liked me. Maybe he saw something that's, he was thinking there's a player there and like as a coach, the coach in him probably was thinking there's something there I can work with or I'd like to try and work with him or something, I don't know. Um, <laughs> But then there was kind of a, it was a mix of it was a mix of me doing well and injuries to the first team, to the strikers that I got in, and it was on my 18th, so February 2007, I would have been 18 that weekend, and I was going home, and then last minute I got called into a first team squad for a cup game. Ended up, we were losing 1-0. I came on and I set up the winner, like last minute, 2-1. And I set up the, the goal. It was just a simple layoff touch. Um, and then that, yeah, that was my debut. Like an unbelievable start. Yeah. So it sounds like at, at these key moments, you've had a trial, you've done well, you've gone, to, you know, you've, you've run all over the place, you've done well. Um, you've gone to first team training, you've done well, you've gone, you know, you've, you've had your debut, you've, you've set up something. Sounds like there's been some key moments that have unlocked, unlocked something, um, you know, and also somebody's seen something in you, gave you the opportunity. So how are you thinking about your own game and yourself at this moment in time? Uh... I can't remember too much from back then. Um, I don't know, just thinking like, this is amazing. Like, <laughs> I've, played, I've played for Celtic. Like, it's in, so, in such a short time, I think because it happened so quickly, I didn't have, like that feeling that I was talking about before where like dreading going to training 
that came later while I was at Celtic. At the beginning, I loved it. I loved, I loved it. Like at the beginning when getting called up from the youth team to train with the first team, you were like, oh, this is, this is a big thing. Um, and then pro- I think the more I was there, de- I, I think the big thing was the more I was there, in the reserves, you're with guys who, kind of, a, lot, a lot of the guys there realise they're not going to play for Celtic or they're not in the manager's plans and maybe they're in the last year of the contract and it's a, it would be very negative like everything is oh, training today or you with the first team and stuff like that and kind of that's would I'd let, you'd let that eat away at you and affect you and you'd bring it into training and then you're not going in with the same like I was saying like with that outlook of Yes, training with the first team today. I'll I can show them something, or I can do this, and yeah. Um, and it's probably yeah, back probably back then, just being able to separate myself from that key um, point, key point yeah. separating yeah. yourself from um, you know, focusing on the outcome and just being able to enjoy the moment. And like you yeah. said, yeah. Hey, this is amazing. Is you enjoying the moment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so like, even from back then, I can see you can you can always see like the guys who the reason the guys who do come from the U team reserves and play for Celtic is because they they do have that mentality. They don't do they separate themselves from all from the rest of the guys. Like they can they can be in in amongst it in the in the dressing room and kind of go along with it. But then once they get out. I think that they're like, okay, they can all think like that, but I'm, I'm on kind of, I'm on this course. Yeah, and 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 I think you know that that there are ingredients, Gillian, to you know to certain players, um, you know, making that that progress and that transition, um, you know, and, and everybody's journey is different, as is you know, as is yours. Um, so okay, you go in boom, boom, boom. Um, biggest game you played for Celtic. Uh, biggest one. The biggest one obviously would be Champions League. Mm-hmm. But my first, my first start, um, is probably bigger because it's that's when you're like, okay, I'm starting for Celtic. Um, so starting, I think that was two thousand and eight. Did the family come over for that one? Uh, my mum was able to make it over. Was she? I'm sure. Yeah, because I think it was last. It was very last minute. Um, I think it wasn't until because I'd been in squads. Um, and maybe come on for a few minutes or who were you playing with at this time? <clears throat> uh, that game I started up front with Scott McDonald. Um, so Jan Venegor of Hess Jan Venegor of Hesslink. Um big Dutch striker. He was injured, I think. And Georgia Samaras was mm-hmm. remember him. Was yeah, remember him. At the time. Um, so when I when I came in and started playing, it would have been with Samaras and McDonald. Okay. And kind of if Jan Venegor of Hesslink, if he was fit, he was playing because he's a big, big target man. Yeah. Um, and then kind of, I think it was more, more so when he got injured, that's when I was getting chances. You see, Killian, um, I, I remember when we first met, we'll get to that because it's not long. Um, you know, after this, but I, I remember when we first met and you mentioned, you know, I asked you about, you know, games and and you said Champions League. And I'm like, I, I remember I've got a picture of me and you in the hotel in Cyprus. And it, it, it's quite a familiar picture of, you know, if if somebody's captured me speaking with speaking with somebody but 
it's like a moment when I'm like, are you kidding me? You have, you have um, experienced this and you've shifted to this, yeah? And I ne I'll never forget, I was like, it's like you remembering that essence of what got you to that point. Um, and I remember you describing um, the Champions League and then obviously it led to your call up to Ireland as well, didn't it? So tell us about that because we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll find something in there that, you know, will help, help others. But what, you know, what, tell us about the Champions League experience. Uh, the Champions League was, I think it was the, I think I'll have to dig the picture out now. Now I've, uh, I've mentioned it. I think I think it was the week after my first start. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think so. I yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, before my first start, I think I came on in Old Trafford. Um, we were losing. We were losing three 0 and Strachan brought me on for the last 10 minutes. I think just to like, it was kind of a free shot for him, like give a young, give a young player a chance to play in Old Trafford in Champions League. Um, and then, yeah, the game after that was, I think, Hibs at home. I started and then there was the Champions League game. And I, was, I wasn't sure if I thought he was going to play one up front. I thought he was going to play Scott McDonald up front on his own. And then he brought me in the day before and said, you're starting tomorrow, you and Scott up front. Um, what were you thinking at this point? I don't, don't really remember, but I, th I think I was like happy. Like I was saying, like a das. I hope I mean, you were like, happy. I mean, like in the way that das, um, that mentality of Oh no! Like or or fear of like being af afraid of like a big game making a mistake. Yeah, that, that I don't remember any of that. Um, and so then who I, was that game against? Hmm? Who was it against? So this is against United. No, the the was the there was another Champions League game after that, wasn't there? Uh, no. So it was the United. There was United away. And then the next Champions League was United at home. At home, okay. Yeah. Um, and then in between those, I'm sure in between those was my first start, which I, do, I scored. So like I'd done well. And then I don't know if that was maybe like his tests, if I can go, I can go with him against United. Yeah. Um, yeah, from the Champions League, the music, the first time the music, like when you're standing there, I know it's something everyone says, but when you're standing there and you hear the music, you you kind of go back to as if you're watching it on the television. Like that, just the sound, like it's, it's as if you're watching yourself in your living room in your living room watching one of the games like yeah. five years ago. Um, it, it, and it's, it's great that you've said the music because, you know, when, um, you know, we were at camp in the summer and we'll talk about that later, but music has a huge impact, doesn't it? Um, yeah. And, yeah. And very often, you know, I only read the other day, the, um, you know, the, the young Norwegian striker who's at, um, who's at Dortmund and, um, he apparently, when he was at Leipzig, pulled up to his one of his teammates and wound the window down, and he was actually playing the Champions League music in his car, just yeah. like just getting himself fired up um, because he wanted to, you know, that's where he wanted to play. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's like music, whatever. Whatever works for you. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, from from that game, just the music, and then from the actual game, 
I don't really you remember. Know, just let me interrupt here. So the, the interesting thing is like, you know, we're talking about this, like we're just having a cup of tea. Um, but the interesting thing is, you know, you played for one of the biggest clubs in football against another biggest club at Old Trafford, at one of the biggest um, sporting arenas. And then you've gone back and played the home leg again. You know, just those two legs, Killian, of football um, in the biggest, in the great scheme of things, you know, big point in your career that, right? Yeah, yeah, huge, huge. Yeah. Um, and also, like, that's one, that's one of the things that gives you a platform to go, like, t- for your CV. Like, it's something that clubs look at and will see he's played Champions League. Like, he, there must be something there. So, like, if you're going through a bad patch, mm-hmm. it's almost like you whip out, you whip out the Champions League appearance or you whip out scoring yeah. for Celtic. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, just enjoying it. All, like all those games, that period of time was just enjoying it. Yeah. Um, so, me, I'm, and like I was saying earlier, like probably should have been enjoying it, but also thinking, I want this all the time. You should have been thinking that, but you weren't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, was that because of belief? Was it? Um, belief, uh, or did you just think? Maybe, maybe a bit, maybe a bit, yeah, because, see, the, th- the thing was, I would have thought Maybe that, a bit. Come on, this is me you're talking to. I, 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 honesty. <laughs> I would have thought that because I was getting in because guys were injured, in my head, I would have been like, I'm, I'm playing because he's, he can't play. Okay. So it's, all, it's kind of like a feeling of, I'm not playing because I'm the best striker available here. Okay. Whereas so that was advice for somebody, you, what if you're saying, if that's advice for somebody, you're saying, do not look at this as, as though I'm in because he's out. No, I, th- I think you can, but use it as, okay, he's injured, I'm getting a chance to play. He's not, I'm going to keep my, I'm going to keep the place. Yeah. So when, he's, when he comes back fit, there's a, there's a new, there's a new problem for the manager or I want to put myself in the position where that guy was. Or, yeah. um, so it's kind of like, I, I think acknowledging that you're you're getting the chances or maybe there's a bit of luck there's timing mm-hmm. but using it as well to your advantage and um, instead of kind of i probably would have just kind of took it and enjoyed it instead of capitalizing on it or, or trying to do more with it right okay that's that's useful so okay you've mo- you've then been sent out on loan down the road to Motherwell. Um, and at this point, you've scored four goals in 14 appearances for Celtic. Um, and the interesting one, as you know, with when I'm working with players, the loan experience is always a mixed one for different players. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and and almost everybody that I've worked with has had mixed experiences with their first few loans. What are you saying about that? Uh, yeah, I think I just went on loan because it it was it was it was just it was the thing to do. Mm-hmm. Like the, right, this is the next stage. This is the next thing to do. You're not playing at Celtic go and experience something else. And at the, be- at the beginning was okay, but then my problem was because I left from Celtic, nice academy training ground, 
and then going to Motherwell where it's a different, completely different. Standard. And, and it's short term, it's only, it's a six months, it's less than six months really, it's probably four months. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, no matter what, you're going back to Celtic, you're going back to the nice. So you had the loan mentality of, it's not really my club, I'm going back. And I'll, yeah. be back in, I'll be back in the nice surroundings soon. Yeah, yeah. And, al- and also that I'm going here, what can I do here that's going to that's gonna beat what I could do at Celtic? What do you mean by that? Like, I'm going to Motherwell. If I score some goals from Motherwell, it doesn't mean half as much as if, I'm, if I score some goals for Celtic. Okay. So that mentality, are you saying, has helped you or not helped you? Uh, no, the, uh, no, it didn't help me. I didn't have, I didn't, you, I didn't use my loans the way you should use a loan. So how should you use a loan? Uh, if you could have your time over again, how should you use a loan? Um. <clears throat> Um, I have it. In, I'm ha- I can see it in my mind what I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good question, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's like t- all the the bad things, not the bad, not the bad things. Mm-hmm. All the things that you wouldn't that you'd take for granted at Celtic, like yep. the, the hard, not they're not hardships though. They're um, like bad training grounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, Training every day, it's it's more fighting than like playing good football. Uh, just probably like more day to day things, and dealing with those, and like maybe, maybe taking those on board and being like, okay, wow, I'm in a lucky position here at Celtic. Instead of just kind of once something bad happens, you're like, ah, it doesn't matter. Going back, I'll, I'm at Celtic. Do you remember Aaron from yeah. Kent? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember what he said about that? Yeah, because and he was yeah, and he probably was even more because Man City now it's like their facilities would be light years ahead of what even what Celtic have. Mm. Yeah, and 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 this is you know for for a young player this is. I was just, you know, this is why this isn't just for, you know, for the football. It's for, um, you know, Aaron described it as, I w- you know, well, I was always thinking I could go back to City and I was at City and it was very different. And so I think it's important. It's an important point for, you know, a player to know. I think it's also an important point for a coach to know because the coach. Well, I'd say probably the... The best thing you could do is if you're going on loan, just ask why. Why are you going on loan? What do I want to get from this? I'd say I went on loan because I wasn't I wasn't playing and it was the thing to do. It was like almost going through the motions of well, this is the normal thing to do without really wanting to do it like if you're at Celtic well why would a play, why if you're a player at Celtic why would you want to go to and play for a smaller team if there's not like if you don't have a bigger picture in your head instead I was just, I was just going because I said oh you should go on loan like okay without really thinking but, but what can I get from then that's your that's that's your fault for not asking the better question, right? Yeah, no, no, yeah, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, before you go, think, well, why? What am I, What can I get from this? Why am I doing this? Instead of just going going through the motions and then knowing it's finished in four months' time. Yeah. So it's squeezing everything out of that four months. Yeah, yeah, good and bad. Um, even, like I'd, I'd probably apply it to 
skipping forward when I was in New Zealand, Australia, not like not playing, but not, not led, not using it to think, oh, I'm not playing, can't do anything. I'm, I'll be leaving here at the end of the season. Instead, I was just going in and kind of doing everything I could that if I was to play, I'm ready or I, I can leave and think I've done everything I could there. Yeah. I, I think if we skip forward, you know, you've had, you then went to Plymouth, you were at St. Johnston, and then at this point you've, you've connected with, you've got an agent then who, you know, we, who that's how we met, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Through John, who's a very good friend of yours and your agent. And, um, you know, I, I remember him saying, I got this player for you. And most of, most of, uh, John's players are kind of young, aspiring top players. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, at the big clubs, um, City, United and Arsenal and Chelsea. So they're all at big clubs. And he said, so you're going to be going to Cyprus. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I'm like, okay. Um, I'd never been to Cyprus. So I was like, okay, I'm looking forward to that. And, um, and actually, as it happened, I was going to Greece. It was purely by coincidence, wasn't it? Because I was... I was going doing a conference in in Athens. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. In fact, I remember saying to John, I was like, I was like, oh, I said I'm going to Athens. Um, I can go to Athens, and then I can go to, I can go to Cyprus. Um, so at this point, you, um, but you'd been to Sofia before that, hadn't you? So, yeah. Where you'd met John? Yeah, so yeah, so going to yeah, in Bulgaria is how I would have been became more friendly with John than probably he would have been if I wasn't I probably wouldn't have met John actually if I if I didn't go to Bulgaria. Right. Was, but the Alan Preston who's the Scottish runs the Scottish department for Stellar in Scotland was the only one, the only person who I dealt with. Right. Um, and then, yeah, so going to Bulgaria introduced me to John and then... This is where I always say you just don't know, you know, players or people just don't know why, why this happens. You know, why... Yeah, yeah, pass. yeah, yeah. There's, it's like the, it's the scenario like of someone getting injured. It's... <clears throat> Timing, it's a coincidence, it's luck, but it can like use it, it can help you. It's yeah, it can help you. And 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 obviously meeting John, um Sophia, you've had that experience there. You've then gone on to I think it was Scotland after that again. Um and then you're in Cyprus, where you do bang in a few goals there, though, didn't you? Uh, uh, Cyprus, yeah. No, so, at, so initially at Cyprus for Apoel, I wasn't scoring a lot. I was playing good. Um, probably, actually, my first six months there, I struggled. Um, and then started to do well, was playing good. And then it wasn't until I moved to Ammonia where I was scoring, started scoring goals. Um, not started, started scoring more goals. Um, and you'd started, at the time, you'd started to work with, um, you'd, you'd bumped into the... Um, Niall, yeah. Niall, the, the police guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, like that's another coincidental meeting where um, actually, yeah, so that's how it all would have started. Niall emailed me or messaged me. He was working, he was working in Cyprus with the UN from the, the Irish police or whatever come over and I don't know what way it works, but he was there and he was studying, he was doing a, 
sports psychology, and and he needed it. He needed some work with. And no, it wasn't even that. He was. He just wanted to come and watch training. He was asking if there was any way he could come and observe training. I think it was maybe a part of the course or something they had to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, "Yeah, I'm sure." Uh, but also, if kind of like if you want to work together, it's something I'm I'd be interested in as well. And that's just that's how it started. And then I remember telling John, uh, uh, yeah, I was telling John like, oh yeah, I started doing this, working with this guy, Niall in, in Cyprus, Niall Stack. And John was like, oh, oh, you should speak with my guy, Jamie. And that's, that, that's kind of how it all worked. It was like one thing leading into another to another. Mm-hmm. Um, all from just kind of being willing to go and do something, basically. And and what was the change? What was the shift for you? You know, in terms of, um, you know, what was what did you feel like? I, I remember our first meeting um, like it was yesterday. We were, you know, and I, I was, you know, I was really interested in the fact that you'd. You, you know, you started late, you'd gone to Scotland, um, you'd had the experience at Celtic. And I think for you, what I was wanting you to do was to draw on the references that you had from that time. I think you'd almost forgotten about what got you there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, In- initially, Initially, the, the thing that I started to, or that I wanted to fix was, or not fix, but to, yeah, fix, work on, um, was more like that consistency, yeah. where not having, not having a good game against uh, the big, like the big teams, the, der- the derby games and Cup games, European games, and then this against lesser teams, where I try not to use this term because you you told me not to <laughs> the smaller games, mm-hmm. um, and kind of not being not being at the same level in those games as you would be for the bigger games. Yeah. So you you had a tendency to get yourself up for the big games, but the, the smaller games. Um, it was almost like, oh, it's only these. But yeah. At the same token, you're trying to be more consistent and, and you're battling with that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and then kind of bringing it all back to training, to not just kind of going in and letting one training go by, kind of like you're saying, like be at it every, every day in training. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so at this point, there's a shift in how you're training and what you're doing in games, yeah? Yeah, yeah, straight away. Straight away it was... Um, that I remember that was the very first thing Niall and myself were doing, was addressing training, like every day, kind of separating myself from... If training, if training was slow or we'd be doing like shooting drills or something and guys would be, you know, like setting the ball, waiting for the ball to sit perfect so they can have a nice shot instead of doing everything like at game speed. Um, and that made, yeah, that made a difference straight away. Just cha- just changing something small like that. Yeah. Something sm- small and easy as well. It's an easy, yeah. like it's... Well, it's easy, easy to know what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. Yeah. If, you know, if you're a plumber and you walk into the kitchen, it's easy to know, you know, how to how to resolve a problem if you know what you're looking for. If you don't know what you're looking for, it's difficult. Yeah. 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 And yeah. being willing to being willing to go and look for what the problem is. Yeah. If you know there's a problem. If there's not a problem, it, it's the diff- there's a different approach to it. 
Yeah. But if there is, uh, which is the challenge because most, you know, will, let's say men won't even look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think that was also for, for us in our, in our time then, it was almost that, you know, I was saying to you at this part of your career, this is not just about your football. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you went, yeah, we were talking for ages and it was kind of, it was more everything. It was <laughs> before folk, like what, yeah, just life, day to day. Um, and then you, you, you then moved from Cyprus to Poland? Poland, yeah. 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 I've been a lot of places with you, even in the short time we've been uh, there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, to Poland. Um, I went to, I moved to Poland because uh, at that time I always felt like I could have been or should have been in the Ireland setup. Right. And I just like I could never get in, not not even close. But I felt like I can I should be there. Mm. Uh, Shooting all over yourself there. I should be in that team. Yeah, that's a, if I was thinking like that from when I was eighteen, then maybe I would have been. But uh, so I, I moved to Poland because I thought if I'm playing in a what they perceive as would be a better league than Cyprus. Because there everyone looks at Cyprus like pfft, Cyprus, like what's Mickey Mouse League. Mm -hmm. um, so then I thought if I'm in Poland, if I go to Poland and do well, I should have a better chance of making an Ireland squad. And it was coming up to the Euros. The Euros were that summer as well. Yeah. Um, Came to Poland. At this, point, at this point, you actually did believe that you had another shot at it because they didn't have that type of player in the squad at the time. Uh, mm, no, no, because no, because they would have had Shane Long, who would be similar enough. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's probably another one to have not said. Um, but it, no, I wasn't thinking like, I just thought this, even the player, if there was someone similar to me, I felt like I still could, mm. should be in there. I still warrant being there. Um, mm. So went to Poland and hit the ground running and still, still nothing. Um, and yeah. that, that's kind of annoyed me, but mm -hmm. it annoyed me, but I can also be like, well, I'd done what I could do. Which I remember, you know, that was some of our focus was if they're watching, they're watching and they'll know, you, you know, it's, and, but you've got to take care of your end of the, of the deal, which is, yeah. is being on it for you and scoring goals and creating goals and doing all of that. Um, but if you can't, if you're not taking care of that bit, then you're not even giving yourself the best chance. Yeah, yeah, no, no, hundred percent. Um, and you play, you, yeah, you play much with more freedom. Like you can go, you're not thinking, I need to play well today because of such and such. Yeah, you're just thinking every day that I need to play well because that's what I should. That's what I do. That's, that's like what I do. That yeah. should be every day. That's who I am. Yeah. How, how did you find then how we worked together? Because that was kind of in the middle of um, our our time. What was it yeah. you found useful or beneficial or what did you hate? I mean, I told you, I just got off a call before and a woman said, she said, I, I hated you. You made me, you made me uncomfortable and you know and I was like did you really hate me she's like no but for the time I did no no from the first from the first 
time we spoke, I, was, I wasn't ready for it. Like, I didn't know we'd be talking about so much stuff that, great. Like, like you were saying, like life, like stuff that aren't, isn't football. And great point. And getting more, like a lot more deep than I would have expected or more intense. Mm -hmm. And then kind of after that, it probably took one or two conversations before I was like, okay, this is how it works. This is what I have to do. Um, or this is how now I want to shut you up. Hmm? I said, now I can't shut you up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just been honest. Like, um, and then probably I started to know that if, if we arranged a phone call, I'd be like, right, I've got this at whatever, four o'clock tomorrow. I need to be ready for this. Kind of like, um, I know what's coming. I need to clear whatever, an hour, two hours. Um, and yeah, it was just kind of, I knew, I'd, I would have been more prepared for, for what to talk about. Or not to talk about, but what we could talk about or where it could go. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think that's a, a, that's a great observation um, in terms of, and that shows for you that, uh, you know, the buy-in for you, because it's your career at the end of the day, you know, is you saying, okay, if we've got a call at this time, I need to be ready almost like for wherever that's going to go. We don't, I don't know where it's going to go, never know where it's going to go, unless I say specifically we're working on this. But very often, um, you know, that's really good observation for, for yourself to say, if I'm going to do this properly, I need to be prepared. You know, if we're going yeah. at four, I'm ready for, I'm ready at four, and I've got this window. Yeah. yeah. It, it, also, one of the, one of the things, I don't know if this would have applied to other people. I'm sure, I'm sure it does. That the first, the first few talks we had, I felt myself, I was trying to, I was trying to say things that I think you wanted to hear instead of like, instead, instead of just like being totally honest and just saying whatever I felt like if, uh, or I'd say something and think he's not going to like that. But he's, not gonna like, he's not going to like that train of thought. And I might, I might not have said that before. And instead I'd say something that, yeah, yeah, he'll think that's good. Kind of, yeah. he'll think that's a good way to be thinking. Yeah. And so you weren't doing it authentically. And that's where there is a point. It, people do do it. It depends on, you know, sometimes it takes a couple of sessions. Sometimes, you know, I call it out very early. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but I think what you're saying is the sooner that you just get to that, which is where we make that distinction between the chat and the conversation. Yeah, yeah. The sooner you get at the, beginning, if, at the beginning, if you're not if you're not ready for it, it's not it's not an easy thing to do to just mm -hmm. to just switch it on. But, like, but how do you know you're ready for it, Killian? That's the that's the I think that's the the question that maybe somebody's listening to or asking is you know I know Joe would always say we would never have met if I hadn't have had that blip in my career. Yeah. Yeah you had the benefit of John saying, I've got somebody I want you to see, speak to. Somebody else, I think a young player or athlete, it's usually, um, they're like, oh, I don't need this, I don't need this. Um, you know, what, 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 would you, what would you say? You, you know, you said you weren't, you know, you, you have to be ready for it, but I think, I think it's, you have to, obviously you have to buy into it, but it has to be something that I've always said, it has to be something that 
a player wants to do. Instead of someone saying, uh, oh, you should, you should go and speak to Jamie. Mm-hmm. And if, they, if, they, if in their head they're like, no, nah, I don't need that. That's not, that's not my problem. Like, that's, but, I'll, but I'll go and do it anyway. Then they're not. You, you, if you're doing it, you'll probably have like, the resistance from them. And then maybe you'll, you'll probably get through to them eventually or quickly. I don't know. But whenever there's somebody like that, I had, um, you know, and funnily enough, one of, um, one of John's players not so long ago. And it's like, it's not for you. It, this isn't about making you do something. Yeah. Also not about something having to happen. It's whether you recognize you recognize that um, it's like I always say with car insurance, you know, if you've got car insurance, you don't get it after the crash. You, you have car insurance before. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so, but some will go, no, I'm, I'm, you know, not for me. Some need to see it in a different context. And some, you know, like one of, you know, John's guys in, in Leipzig, you know, he's like, yeah, love this. And there's nothing, you know, you know, he yeah. is going to be top, top player, but he, he recognizes for himself, if he wants to go to another level, he has to have this in place. So I think you're right. It's kind of where you're ready, but you, it's like you have to come, isn't it? It's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not. Me. And I, think, I think it all comes from people's perception of what it means. Yeah. That it means there's something wrong. Like, kind of by going to that, it's almost like saying to people, oh, oh he's got a problem. Or he's struggling. Yeah. Or it's when, in, in fact, it can be probably like the player, like the best players in the world, I'm sure, are doing it. To, to, either, stay, to either stay at the level they're at, or probably because they're at... Probably because they are where they are, they're thinking to go even more to the next level, to the next level. Is that, do you believe that? Do I believe what? Does you believe that there are, you know, there, there are players that um, they must be working on something to stay where they are? I think, yeah, no, I think like player, like people at the top of their game, know the like the mental side of it and how like what they need to do do for that that side of it that it's not it doesn't need to be the players who are struggling that need it to get better that you can be doing good you can be playing really well training really well happy and still want to go and and use it yeah yeah and that's the misconception that you said earlier. That there's got to be something wrong. There's got to be something. There's got to be something wrong. It, so, if if, um, if we let's, you know, you, you've gone to. Um, we'll, we'll we'll come back to our man Sarpreet in a in a little while. Um, because you met him on your next stop. Um, what was your experience of camp last summer? Uh, yeah, it was, uh... So had I told you about, had I told you about camp before? And... Uh, I think, I'm sure you told me about this. Did you do it the year before? The summer yeah, I mean, before? I do it, every, I do it every year. It's yeah. just, it's just, um, some some of the people that I work with say, "Can I come?" Some get told, "Okay, you go in." And I think we'd worked together for a, a few years, and my it you know again, I, my thinking was, you know, you as a as a you know a senior player because it's usually the aspiring players who come. Yeah, yeah. You know, my belief was. I was always going to do one for the senior players that I work with. 
because um, it's no different. Um, Joe had asked me, when am I getting to come to one of those camps you do for the younger players? Yeah. And so I was thinking, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we've got some dates. And you were in New Zealand. Yeah. You were in New Zealand. So I hadn't told you much about it. And I think the, the big thing for me was whether that's a, you know, it is, it's a, it was a sign of the, our relationship and where we'd gone to. You're in New Zealand coming back for the summer. Yeah, this is yeah. that right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because my the contract finished, so I was finished in New Zealand. Yeah. But I've just come, yeah, from from New Zealand. Yeah. And I, and and I've, you know, I, I've said, we've got camp. It's this day. What are you thinking? Uh, just that I wanted to do it. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm in. Um, and then, but no idea what to expect. <laughs> like the, the days before, I was like, what do I even, what do I bring here? How much, how much stuff do I bring? Do I need this? Do I need that? Um, I'd not yeah. told you much about it though, had I? No, no, not really. Just kind of, you were saying some things to bring, like if we were on walks or hikes and things, I was thinking, oh, I've never hiked. Well, I don't have hiking equipment. I was thinking, what? I I just didn't know what what to bring, what to pack, what to do. Um, but I was like, but I mean, I'm gonna do it. Cool. I mean, I, I'm gonna trust that it's gonna, you know, there's gonna be a benefit to it somewhere. And yeah. Or even if, well, what I like to think on a lot of things, like if there's no. Okay, I can. I'll get a benefit from. It. I knew from this, I'd get a benefit from it. But from other things, where I'm thinking, if can I use that, and maybe I'll get a benefit. But then I'll say to myself, if if, if I can do it, if I can do it, and it's maybe I don't get a benefit, but I know it's definitely not going to make me worse. There's always going to be a slight chance that there's going to be a little improvement. Then it's worth doing it. But as long as I know I can do that, or someone will say, oh, have you tried this? And you might be skeptical about it, but if you know that it's not making you worse, then why not? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a very good perspective. So you've cut, you've, you've gone, you're, you're on your way and you're thinking it's, it's not going to make me worse. So I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, I'd like had the confidence of knowing that I definitely will get something out of it. Yeah. And at this point, you didn't know who was going to be attending either. Uh, no, no, I don't think, no. I'm pretty sure you didn't say that. And you didn't even know where you were going. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, no. I just freed, what was it, two, two three days and said, right. Yeah. And, and part of it, Killian, is that's, it, you know, whilst that's not the event planner in me, that is just, it's, there's an element of when you, when you believe in something and you say, I'm going to get something from it, part of that challenge and the test is, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get something out of it. I know that there's going to be some good in it. I'm going to get myself there. I'm going to find out. So I'm actually having to deal with some of the uncertainty as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what was, what I was really, um, you know, impressed to see what you did was you're on your way back to Ireland but really you've gone right. Okay. I just need to sort my flights out. And a lot of people, they go, oh, you know, that means I've got to do this and I've got to take a detour and I'm going to see my family. And, but what you did was, okay, well, you know, I'm going to fly to there. I'm going to get to Manchester. Where am I going? What time do I need to be there? 
what's the postcode? And all I did was I sent you, I said, get to Manchester airport, get a taxi, here's the postcode. And you're in a taxi and you turn up. Mm. That's, that's the biggest thing is actually the showing up. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's always easy to, it's easy to cancel things. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's the belief. It's easy to cancel it because it's inconvenient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Like even this, like, ended up going to bed late last night. I was like, oh, I woke up this morning. I was thinking, I wonder if he's forgot. <laughs> And, got, and, then, and then I got the message and I was like, right, let's do it. Yeah. You make a great point because it is easy. You know, we could have gone, you know, can we put it off to here? Could we put it, you know, and, and I did move it because, you know, there was something that couldn't be moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is easy to shift things isn't it that yeah it's it's easy to do it and it's also it's hard to get out of it or it's, it's a hard habit it's a hard habit to stop like once you do it once mm -hmm. the next time like, ah, i'll think of something i'll think i'll not do it um, yeah. that, that's one of the things i like about poland um, is their their attitude towards like they don't really make excuses i find in in football right like if there's something wrong with maybe a training field or they don't have something they're like doesn't matter we'll we'll adapt and, and continue doing it like in, in training they'll get fouled or they'll get kicked they just, just get up they don't yeah it, it it's almost like no excuses accountable and I'm saying that because you know I've also got shit I've got to do which you know is kind of accountability so you know I'm saying that and thinking yeah but that applies to me so it applies to everybody um, and I think that's not I think I know that's what we have because I make you accountable yeah yeah with that um, so just going back to camp because you know it's it's probably the hardest thing to explain in terms of what you get out of it and what the experience is um, and, and how, how we work. So you said hiking, what, what surprised you most? You've got, um, there's four of you, you, Joe, EK and Aaron. Aaron yeah. yeah. What did you, um, no, give us the, give us the, the summary of that experience and working with the guys? I don't know if anything really surprised me. Mm -hmm. um, although, uh, yeah, yeah, probably surprised. When I was talking with Aaron and EK and how similar their loan experiences was to what I had had. And like I was listening to them, I was like, that's exactly like I was doing that. I know exactly what what they're talking about, um, and then I don't know if I don't know if they would have took in what I was saying because it's the because like they wouldn't they wouldn't know me they wouldn't know who I am anything like that so I'm not you weren't the Joe Hart yeah that. yeah it would have I think it would have been if. If Joe was saying it to them, they might have been like, okay, like he's, Joe Hart, he's been there, he's done that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was probably the, the most interesting thing, just to hear like how similar their experience, their loan experiences was to, to mine and how their thinking of it was. And, and they knew why it wasn't working out. Um, but then the fact that they were dealing with it so young or addressing it or trying to address it right like at, at that time was well hopefully is beneficial to them 
Mm. I know EK went on um, and had a fantastic season. Yeah, yeah, flying. Um, so yeah, that, that, yeah. So in terms of surprising me, probably that because because I went there not really with no expectations of thinking right. This is going to happen or that's going to happen. Mm. Kind of everything that we did do was all new. Was it some of the like exercises and experiences that we had together as a group? I recall the the billboard exercise, which was mammoth, even in the context of, you know, I've done that many times and never really put it in, in a, a certainly in a football context with you guys. I remember Joe saying to himself and he said it on camera he said I didn't even know where he was going with this yeah but at the end of it it was like light bulbs like for everybody yeah yeah, yeah. remember yeah. it yeah yeah what I, I, was yeah I was thinking the same I was thinking the same like until kind of it's not until nearly the very end of it when you see it and you're just like ah yeah okay I get I get everything now um, yeah, I thought, yeah, that was um, interesting. Very. <laughs> we, we, we looked at the watch and we were like, how long have we been going? And like, because it was four people, wasn't it? So, and we went back to back to back to back. Yeah. With all four of you. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that, I think that was probably the, the moment as well when EK and Aaron kind of came out of themselves. You felt that that was yeah. when, when they right. Yeah, yeah when, when we were doing that. Um, I don't know if that was kind of like, or they relaxed more or maybe what, maybe seeing it, it's, it's clicked with them straight away, I don't know. Right. That's it. That's interesting observation also that, um, because I think for, for both of them, seeing, you know, obviously you'd been to Celtic and you'd had, you know, you know, I, I, I'd say journeyman as a, that for me, that's a badge of honour because it's called wisdom and experience and, you know, you've walked a lot of miles. So that's, you know, from a positive perspective, you know, so a, you know, a player who's under 23s and starting making that journey actually sees where you've been in terms of experience and then having somebody like a Joe Hart in the room. Um, it, I think Aaron had said it just felt good to know that those guys have been there, which is very different from looking at a player who's in your club and going, you know, that he's been there. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, was that mainly around the environment? Because what did you think of the environment? As in, you know, we're in a we're in a farmhouse, we're in a barn. You know, um, did we look after you? Yeah, no, yeah, very well. All the, the the environment, everything was was good. But I think from the unless you get four good friends, four people who know each other from the very beginning, it's not going to be, everyone's not going to be like conversation flowing and everyone's like best friends. So it's going to, it takes, it's natural for it to take a few hours or a day for everyone to kind of then be comfortable and yep. speaking that, like honestly, honestly to each other. Um, and I think that, that, that probably happens. Yeah, that happens. It probably, it probably happened quite quickly, no? Yeah, it did. It did. And, and, and you were all in the same position. You know, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like Joe was walking in there and going, you know, the, 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 you know again, the great thing for him is that, he, you know, he said, I'm just, I'm showing up like everybody. He wasn't, yeah. Yeah. He wasn't walking in going, you know, I'm, you know, I'm this player with this status he was coming to work on himself. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what did you feel about that though? Did did you did you know what did you feel about having him in the room in that context? Uh it probably takes away it takes away that's that idea that's or that thing that's always in your head that's saying there's something wrong with you for doing this. That you're like if you see if you see someone like a Joe Hart come in, you can feel almost like, okay, yeah, no, this is a good thing. There's, I can I can be open and honest with it all. Like he he's come in and he's doing it. Why shouldn't I? Okay, so you you took um, you took almost like the. the there was like a, a comfort that <clears throat> if a player at that level's talking about this, then and spending three days away, then I'm doing that also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm sure he's a much busier schedule than I have. Yeah. That's that. Okay. If he, if he's, if he's here and doing it, if he's coming and he's being honest with everyone, he's not just showing up because he has to show up. Yeah, he's not showing up because somebody's told him to show up and it's summer. Yeah, yeah. And he's here and he's he's open, he's asking questions, he's answering questions. It's then you're like, Yeah, there's no no excuse for me not to. Yeah. Which is what you said earlier is that it would have been very easy for you to just cancel and say, oh, I'm going straight home to Ireland, can't make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. That's good because you know I know a lot of people, you know players do that. Say, oh, I can't make it. Um, well, and sorry, the, the other thing in football that is quite big is a little bit on what I was saying earlier is if a player if if a player tells you something and they're not at a certain standard, you're not to, you're not listening to them. Okay, um, and what what's your relevance of saying that? In turn, like I mean, for someone like Joe coming in and and saying things or giving advice to them or even opening up, it shows that it shows that because if if he's doing it, it's the same thing. Then I'm going to do it. So you're saying it's important to have somebody like Joe there? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's not, not a necessity, but I think it definitely would speed, it speeds up in everyone else straight away is, has bought into it or straight away everyone, everyone's on board. There's no like waiting for, waiting to see what's Joe going to do. Okay. Or kind of like, well, if he's if he's not really, I can see he's not really into this. Then I'm not I'm not really going to be into it. I think I think Kaleen, that's been that's been I would say um, I'd say the the whole mental game in in general. Yeah, um, I would say the mental game in general has been where. If the senior player isn't on board with it in a group, then what happens is they have it, the others don't buy into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, that's that's what I was trying to say at the, at the beginning of it. Um, yeah, but you walked in and you're like, "Well, Joe Hart's doing it, so it's got to be. It, it, it's got to be. Um, it's got to be us." Yeah. I'd say I think that anyway, didn't you? Because yeah, you I was going to say that. I think I think I still would have, I think I still would have acted how I would have acted, and um, but I think for like the the two other guys, the, the younger guys, EK and Aaron, it would have I think it definitely would have helped them be more at ease or more accepting of it. Yeah. Whereas if it was say if it was just if it was just those two and me 
I don't think I would have had the, I definitely wouldn't have had the same effect on them that Joe Hart would have had in, in the room. What would you say in terms of then getting the likes of um, you know because this is Joe saying really all your guys should be here Ruben, Fraser you know Luke all top boys and he's you know you only ever talk about that kind of thing in a different context usually a social context um, what would you say then about players in general having that experience? What's the be- you know what's the benefit? What I'll, I'll rephrase the question: What's the benefit to a player? Should they be doing that in preseason? Um, what's the impact of doing that for three days and then go into pre-season after, after that? The impact on the player or the impact on the camp? No, on the player. On the player. Um, um, just that it gets you ready. It gets you, like you were saying, like it gets you ready for, for whatever might happen. Or, or more to the point of, Maybe it won't. Maybe it won't make you more prepared, but it's not good. You're not going to go into preseason in a worse state. If anything, you're go. You're going to go in where you were, where you would have been going in, or you're going to go in ten percent better, fifty percent better. Yeah. So why? So why not? So why not? I don't know. Take take the chance of. It could be the ten percent, or it could be the fifty percent, but it's definitely not going to make you go in worse off. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Yeah, and it could, you could do exactly like EK, and you end up being um, finding out. You go, you go back, and you have a great season. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, or yeah, it could be me and you're going to the northern Israel tucked in, <laughs> tucked in yeah. beside the Golden Heights where you're like, okay. And, and, and yeah, for you it was very different. You go in somewhere, you go into northern Israel and you're having to deal with that. Yeah, yeah. And, was... you know, and for somebody else, they're going off and, you know, which is why... I can't say it's going to do this for you because I don't know what how you're going to apply it to a certain situation. Yeah, I know it, it's not going to. It might not. It might not be a case of right. I've gone to this camp now. Preseason, I'm going to be this much better in preseason. It might not be beneficial to you for another year, maybe, or another ten months or two years. I, you know, I need to, something. It's something that you you'll have there in your pocket. I need to bottle that phrase that you've just said right there, and that is the phrase right there. Out of everything you've said, it might not be now. It might be a year away. It might be two years away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, now you've an, you've an easy job editing this. Just got <laughs> <laughs> everything into that one minute. Yeah, no, it 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 is a, but that's where I think, Killian. You know, and and this is like from me to you. If 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 you'd have not uh, the the interesting one is that we you know we'd sat down you know we met in Cyprus and then and obviously you've been on your travels. So very, most of our work has been like this. Yeah, yeah. Hasn't it? In yeah. fact, you know, so, so we met face to face. That's the first thing. You know, so we had that kind of half a day in Cyprus and then we, we did a bit more before I left. Then we were on the, on the phone like this. So we, we're like four, four years in. Yeah. 
you know, we're four years in, um, and I'm going to count how many times we've met physically in four years. Cyprus. Cyprus, Manchester. Yeah, you came to Manchester, didn't you? Yeah, you, I remember you flew in. So Cyprus, then you flew into Manchester. Um, um, the camp. Then you came to, no, we met in London. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We played golf, didn't we? Yeah. 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 How bad a golfer you are. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> played golf, yeah. So Cyprus, Cyprus, Manchester. Then we met in London, played golf, and then you came to camp. Yeah? Yeah. So in four years, we physically met four times. Yeah. Yeah? But in four years we've spoke every other month minimum yeah. yeah yeah and that's where i think the it, it's like we had that initial connection lay in the foundations and then we've built on from there haven't we yeah yeah um yeah now it's like yeah, comparing it like how I can speak to you now to how the first two or three times where it's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and now it's not just, okay, you know, the football context, you'll get on the phone and you'll say, mm, I'm a little off with this. But then another call, I remember one of them, uh, when you were in New Zealand, because I was remembering the time difference, and we were talking about your future projects and the media stuff and, you know, your podcast and production and um, meeting that, staying in that guy's house in New Zealand and... Yeah, yeah. Just you know, co coincidences again, like just things happening. And, mm -hmm. and then, yeah. So that was one of that was one of the things where, yeah. in football terms, the move didn't work out um, at all. But I was able to take something from it, um, yeah. and then yeah, just yeah. Whereas before, maybe I would have taken it as oh, that was a waste. Um, and then pro actually probably not before probably would have just if I knew that it was his house I, I wouldn't have followed up and tried to meet him after so it was probably it was, the big thing was I went and tried to meet him for a coffee I went and like tried to arrange things instead yeah. of before I would have just let us let it happen you went yeah. and made it happen yeah yeah um, and then just from that I was able to it, just from that like changed the whole how I look back on it like the whole six months changes yeah and I think that's where you know if you weren't a footballer and we were working together anyway we'd be talking about how to maximise those opportunities yeah yeah and I think that's one thing that you know, I'll say it from a football perspective, um, is the real understanding of how you can, um, how you create opportunities, not just expecting them to come to you because you play football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and it's like, it's like that, um, It's like that thinking of doing something that you know you're not, it's not gonna make you worse. So like trying to arrange that meeting. I love that. The worst, the worst thing that's gonna happen there is I can't, or the, he can't meet me, or he doesn't wanna meet me, or they'll say no or come up with an excuse. But then what could come from it far outweighs. Yeah. 
than him saying no. And do you remember, because I remember exactly where I am at, on certain phone calls, and I remember exactly the point I was when, you know, people listening to this will not understand. Um, so you explaining whose house that was, yeah? So, yeah. you know, you've been put up as a player in some big Hollywood producer's house. In, what film did he make? Uh, so he wrote Sleeping Sleepless. He wrote Darkest Hour, the Churchill one, The Theory of Everything, Bohemian Rhapsody. What? The two, the two Popes. What? All, all Oscar winning films. And then I was like, I have to try and meet, I have to try and talk to him. Like, yeah. even. Well, you weren't going to. No, pro no, probably not. And then I was like, you're like, what an opportunity. Running. Yeah. And you're like, what an opportunity. It's kind of like it's meant you're there for, there's a reason that you've gone all the way to New Zealand. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just, yeah, taking a, a chance that was there and, I'm thinking. Di I'm thinking differently about it. Yeah, just yeah, just doing it. Good. Well, I think that's uh, been all part of your journey. In think you know, not just thinking about it and doing it, and you've managed to, you've managed to be, you know, turn. I think the word journeyman into a positive expression. Um, in my in my head. Yeah in, yeah, in your head, but you're not the kind of guy who I think thinks about, you know, what other people are thinking too much. Yeah. Um, yeah so it, that's the only place really that it, it does matter. Um, let's finish on um, briefly the, the topic of, um, you know, you explore different um, protocols on regime and uh you know your diet and you know you talk or not talk but you film a lot of you know what you're doing in that and um you know so you've experimented with lifestyle and i think you're also planning on what's next for you as well so you know briefly you know share with me share with others you know what's the importance of um the beliefs that you've got around um you know your diet and the choices there uh, so vegan diet for four years four years now yeah maybe, yeah. maybe a bit more or less um yeah, no, it's, everyone asks why, why'd you do that or how'd you start it? And it was only to, to, I just wanted to see what it was like, just to try it out. When I was inside, yeah. I was like, I'll you give that a go. Um, I was like, yeah, I'll give that a go. And started to feel a difference, had energy, everything, just everything about it worked for me. Um, that's probably one of the biggest things that because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for someone else or someone else might not be in a position or have the time to do it properly. And, um, but for me, just, just cause I felt the difference, I felt energy, everything. And um, I just kept doing it. And there was never like when I've done it, there was never a, a time when I thought, Oh no, I've I've got this diet or I'm doing this diet. Mm -hmm. It was all it was all because it was my choice and it wasn't a diet where it's forced on you where you have to lose weight and you can't eat certain things. Because it was my choice to do it, there was never that feeling of I can't have foods. It was more I I don't want to have those foods. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's been easy for me to to keep doing it. Um 
Well, I wouldn't say... I'm not saying that that's me for the rest of my life. Okay. Doing it. But I'm not saying it the other way. I'm not saying I'm, that means I'm not going to do it for the rest of my life. You know what was the funniest bit? It just reminded me when we were at camp and we're, we've got, you know, so we've got Chef in there, we've got Chef Adam, and he's come up with a challenge because basically we want you guys to cook and um, and we're like two teams um, going ready, steady, cook, and one group's got to cook for the other, and when <laughs> when they realised when they realised they had to cook a vegan meal for you, I think it was Joe and Aaron, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. And they had to cook a vegan meal for you, and they were like, "Oh my god, we never cooked vegan, never, you know." Yeah, that's the thing. No, no one has any idea. Everyone thinks like there's no vegan food when they're like, "So what do you eat? What do you eat?" I have to exp- every time I say, "Ah, you know, chicken." I think it was just that moment that Joe and Aaron were like. Aaron looking at Joe like, have you ever cooked vegan food? And Joe's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No? And, 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 and Joe's looking at Aaron going, well, and Aaron's like, I don't cook anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And to be fair, they've done a good job. And, and then I think they'd made something and one of them had put chicken in, in the, in, and they had to start all over again because you know they they added meat to it. So yeah, it was um, it was uh, it was funny. Yeah. I'm sure you find that anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, uh, yeah. I'm used to it. I'm used to that to that reaction. Yeah. Good. So anything that you wanna um, you wanna say to anybody or um, on the on the whole, well, I really appreciate the time, and um, you know, I think, I mean, just your experience, and like I said, being, um, you know, we've, you know, we, it's been a it's been an interesting journey just working with you. You, you know, um, you know, I I always say, um, I only p- work with people I like, um, you know, and. And good people, and and you know we've we've had a, you know it's been interesting our time. But um, anything that you would share from, you know, your many miles of, um, on the journey, in in a sentence. Come on, that. I don't know what what were some of the good things I said. To you? Um. I, I I think if. There have been some gems, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna summarize them. Um, but you know, if you were saying to, I don't know, just pro- uh, I wouldn't say look, look for the positive though. But it's like, uh, I don't know, just do whatever you can, do what you can, do what you can. Like it's, don't leave something thinking you could have done more. Or, Yep. Um, yeah, without it being without it being too cl- cliche. And and you, I guess a final point on that is, you know, do you look back on your career with regrets, or that you could have done more, or do you look back and say, you know, like we've talked about coincidences, which has been a theme, you know, there's a reason why it you know, your you career's panned out the way it has? Uh, yeah, no, definitely have regrets. But I, I don't think, like, I don't think that if I'd done something different, I wouldn't be where I am now. There's still every chance I could be where I am now, but I would have liked to have done probably to have applied myself more when I was younger um, or just having a different mentality. Uh, but at the time I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. that's not a regret. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. If you, yeah, if, if I can have a regret and also still enjoying what I did, <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, good. Well, listen, really appreciate it. Um, you can go back to bed now. No, no, that's me up now. That's me up. Got, uh, got music to make, music to learn. Music to make, music to learn. <laughs>